the missing two members of the Dan Tomkier team helping out the competition. You do, you're just fixing it up so you can trash it again. That's right. They want me in the melee so they can have a go at flipping me out the ring. <laughs> you got them, sir. They don't you? want to go out there and just There's wander around the Don't this. be mistaken. Um, can you do it? Yeah, with their help and everyone else's help, uh, we're just fitting the batteries in as the original ones were fried into little crispy things. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Panic Attack sent us two fully charged batteries. Put the wheels. The, uh, will you have a weapon going? Because your motor was damaged for your weapon. Yeah, but well, George uh, took it apart and straightened it out. They tested it on 12 volts and it seems to be working. It's George Francis from the Chaos Team. That's right. And Tornado presents one of their wheels. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to mend the puncher after all. So uh, it's going to be a bit of everyone's robot. Isn't it? It's real teamwork, isn't it? It is, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's lovely. Down to Mackay. Wild Thing. 13 Black. So another chance for the 13 Black and Dan Tom Keir team there and the Adams family and Wild Thing. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots, Sir Killalot. Ready to trundle and rumble, and dead metal. Three, two, one. Brilliant sportsmanship from the rest of the Roboteers to put Wild Thing back together again as Dan Tom Gear, the missing link, now returned, comes in. Vents off a little bit of steam and immediately is on the attack and looking much more impressive, taking on 13 black. One of those discs repaired with a little bit of sticky tape, it would seem. Dan Tom Keir very much on the prowl, smashing onto 13 Black. Looking to come again. Wild Thing being thrust away. Looking the lightweight of these machines. Wild Thing at the moment. Reached the first round of the semi final series by 13 Black. Meanwhile, takes a terrific pounding there. And Wild Thing, they're being crumpled and munched by dead metal. I think Wild Thing's totally out of it, but Dan Tonkier played a major part with that shove on 13 Black, then the flick, down it came with a crunch. Wild Thing then drove itself onto the flipper of Dan Tonkier, and in came Jeff Metal, and the sparks flew. The blade is turning, but there's no one at home, Wild Thing. 13 Black, I think, is that it's as well, Dan Tonkier trying to, oh! Wild Thing is driven straight into the bit. Dan Tonkier just pressed the release button. Wild Thing unawares drove themselves onto it. Nick and Isabel Adams have gone out at the semi-final stage of Robot Wars for the fourth time. 13 Black, surely to... <laughs> How can you smile when you've worked... <laughs> So hard on your machine. <laughs> what are they doing out there? It's great fun. All that work. <laughs> great stuff. In defeat, a smile. And so <laughs> some sort of dance. Yeah, well, the, the slogan is spin to win, coined by the Hypnodisc Rose family originally. And the Wild Thing team and the 13 Black Boys are heading out of the series semi-final. Beaten twice then in the initial battle in the semi and here in the losers' melee. And Dan Tom Keir looks much stronger now, don't you agree? Link back in place. And the full bottle pressure flipper seems to be working. They want the pit. You can hear the crowd crying. I think... Dan Tonkia won 13 black out of the arena just as they flipped Mighty Mouse earlier on in the series and Chaos 2. 13 black wants none of it. And he's still mobile and he's still a threat with those two spinners. And he's got it underneath Dan Tonkia and once again they're wedged on a grinder. That's the second time we've seen that. Not too clever, is it? So Killalot's there. Dead Metal briefly. He's retreated to have a run, I think, at Dan Tom Kia. 
just away. 13 Black comes in. That's a strong onslaught from 13 Black. When it crosses the arena like that, it's travelling at 20 miles an hour. But he's just left himself broadside on for a Dan Tom gear shove. And 13 Black goes over yet again. And we've seen, though they claim they're invertible, they can run upside down. It's hardly quick progress. Dan Tomkia, one or two shoves more. Six. It's going to go to the judges, this. I don't think they'll have too much work to do to decide the winner. Dan Tomkia or 13 black? Well, I think it definitely got. <laughs> Another spectacular battle we've thrown to the judges. And the judges have decided the winners are Dan Tom Kier! Well, the new kids on the block, mixed reception from the crowd. But I tell you what, it was obvious you won to me. Um. Yeah, when you turn them upside down and leave them there, yeah. um, and they stay upside down for the fights, for, they're dead. Yeah, they were upside down for ages, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. The other one was in the pit, they're dead. You were gutted when you lost your last fight, and you've come in through the back door. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do it for the kids. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Tom Kia! <laughs> little time on the arena floor. I don't know. We got there, but uh, Siren and Peter go off after we, after we were actually in the pit. It was late. We actually we were going out, got into the pit, and then the Siren went off. Oh well, that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but, that um, it was great how everyone helped us out. We got all bits from everyone, and it worked. Yeah. It worked really well. So that's the major achievement for you? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's what it's all about, getting it back in there. Yeah. Congratulations. It was fantastic. Thanks so much. <laughs> you didn't tell me you'd built a robot that could work upside down. That's what these bits are for. <laughs> it was just a brilliant dancing robots in such a crucial, crucial battle as well. Was there a point where you thought, eh, we might do this? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when they embedded themselves in the sidewall, we thought, perhaps we've got it now. Yeah, that would have been absolutely <laughs> that would have been excellent. Yes. But as it was, you must have enjoyed it. Great fun. Absolutely good, brilliant you, fun. Any huge areas of damage? Um, oh, I can see under there. Yeah, little went through the chassis. Bits. Yeah. Um, it's actually affected it. <laughs> ah, it's cut into the disc there as well. Yeah. And he's cut into the disc there. Yeah, the house robots weren't very kind, but you didn't expect that anyway. What we did have was the most entertaining battle. Thank you so much, because I know your out. tension was high. <laughs> what a way to go out. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well done. So just confirmation then that Dan Tom Keir win the loser's melee and go through to the second round of the semi-final. Coming up in a few moments, Razor will meet them. Some fight that, but first it's Firestorm against S3. So, four robots remain. But hey, only two can go through to our grand final at the end of the series. Prepare for the ultimate fight for survival. Now is not the time for surgery when you're about to fight for a place in the final. Trying to put a new aerial on quickly. Well, that makes sense. You feeling all right? A bit nervous now. Yeah, Firestorm, good robot. Better control than we have, so... And another flipper as another well. Another flipper, which I know you don't like. No. OK, let's see how Firestorm are feeling. Hello. Oh, cool. There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You're not nervous in the slightest now. There's so much at stake. You're fighting for a place in the final. Yeah, right. They don't like flippers? They don't. I think we've got a little bit more manoeuvrability than them as well, so... Yeah, and they've got a little dodgy wheel there going on. They didn't mention that, but I know it's true. <laughs> yeah, they've got a bit of a limp. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be fine. Should be fine. If not, we should want to know why. Yes. competitors, Graham Bone and Hazel Heslock, the Firestorm team, and there, Dave Peatney in an S3, and Matilda's in the arena with the tusks and the flywheel and dead metal, already impressive in the semi-final, is back again. The winner of this battle goes through to the series grand final. It is as simple as that. Firestorm getting in underneath S3. 
PS3 beaten in the series semi-final round two stage by Razor last time around. Firestorm has been through to the grand final twice. Bags of experience and meat and muscle there and suddenly came off the arena sidewall. Such was the power of Firestorm's thrust. 100 kilos moving at 12 miles an hour and S3 turned up on its side. Now that's an interesting problem. How are they going to get out of that one? Well, with a fair degree of nonchalance it seemed initially but then Firestorm flicked them back and up and up. the tactics crashing down onto our camera tracking system there but what a good drive 